For many months now, Tommy Tuberville, the senator, Republican senator from Alabama, has been essentially the lone voice standing up for the unborn uh, in the United States of America in many ways, uh, especially as it relates to the American military, because the Biden administration made a decision, although it's illegal to uh, support and to advance abortions with federal money, the Biden administration ignored that and they were paying for abortion flights to make sure that abortions continued using U.S. taxpayer dollars that were actually dedicated for the military and to make sure that the military was ready to kill not American babies, but instead foreign enemies. So Tommy Tuberville tried to fight back against all of this illegality. He held up a lot of these sort of routine uh, uh, unanimous consent appointments of generals and said, hey, if you want a general promoted, a senior officer promoted, you've got to go through regular order so long as this is happening. And it slowed things down too much in the Senate and everybody got mad at Tommy Tuberville. So this week it all changed and Tommy Tuberville basically ended his, his blockade on most of these promotions. What led to this? Well, Chris Bedford has been following it really closely. He's the executive editor of the Common Sense Society magazine, and he joins us now. Chris, good to talk to you as always, sir. Great to be here. Okay. So Tommy Tuberville, I've said throughout this, is a hero. I thought that he did a fantastic job. And Absolutely. now his his blockade has essentially come to an end. He's still denying unanimous consent for the senior most positions, four-star generals and above. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody beneath that, he's now saying, OK, fine, I'll give unanimous consent. Why is that? What happened here? Well, he was backed into a corner. So he was new to Washington, D.C., fairly new. Uh, so he didn't get the memo that you're not that the, that the Pentagon is sacrosanct in the, amongst Republicans and Democrats. But no matter what you disagree on, you got to keep on shoveling money to the Pentagon. It doesn't matter how many how much money is wasted if they're if they're pursuing illegal politicized abortion policies you're not supposed to touch it and he didn't get that and he decided to fight fight them on that and hold up those nominations and the senate could have come in and voted on those things but senators really don't like to vote i mean they work about three and a half days a week and they don't like to vote they like to raise money they like to go on their trips that's what their preference is for so they couldn't stand this and they they said he was sacrificing military readiness and they pushed him to back down from his position. Um, the National Defense Authorization Act comes up, and the House of Representatives passes a version that says, hey, no more money for this, for these abortion vacations. But when the Senate and, and when Tommy Tuberville's team is working in the Senate, all right, here's our chance to beat this, they were thinking, to finally get rid of it, to end their hold, and to make it stop. But in conference, he was betrayed. Now, he had privately, his team had privately been whipping senators and trying to talk to them, people on both sides of the aisle to say, hey, we'll vote for this, we'll end the hold, and we'll, we'll stop paying for abortions in the military. Was, this team was confident they had the votes, but Schumer and McConnell, and of course the House of Representatives, including Mike Johnson, they, they decided not to give it a shot, and they decided they weren't going to hold any votes during this conference, and they were just going to bulldoze it, they weren't going to take the House version, uh, and he was defeated. And then then the Senate was threatening, this was going on at the same time, that they were going to change the rules of the Senate to make it the House of Representatives, uh, just for the end of this term on military promotions. So instead of needing 60 votes to get something over the threshold, they could just do 51 and just blast it right through. Uh, and his colleagues, Tuberville's colleagues, his own Republican colleagues, came to him complaining and begging and moaning and saying, oh, if you, if you let them do this, it'll break the Senate, uh, then it'll be used against all of us. And they tried to say, you're, you're responsible for this. And that's what eventually I think he ended up shifting back on. He didn't want to go to the mat and make them vote to go nuclear on this. Uh, on this. And he decided, you know, I've done this for nine months. I've stood as long as I could. Mike Lee was someone who stood with them the entire time. J.D. Vance came out and was someone else. But he, he, he learned the true nature of his Republican colleagues. He couldn't go to uh, a, a caucus lunch without his statements being leaked or without him being attacked by his colleagues. And what did he do is he, one, dared to stand up for the things that his base and his supporters and his voters wanted, dared to stand up to the big bad Pentagon uh, and not back down. He wasn't bullied by his allies. And he's also, this is a, a gr important thing, is he, he remembered that a U.S. senator is a very powerful person. And all these politicians will tell you, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this. Yes, they can. 
one senator can hold things up for nine months like, like he did, or nine or ten months. Senators have a lot of power. They don't like to so, use it for things. But yeah. imagine if this had been on a popular issue amongst Republicans. Republicans duck and cover the politicians when it comes to abortion. But if he could do this in abortion, maybe something that's more uniting on the Republican side, like the border, they could do it there too. And he, he reminded people that a Republican senator can get a lot done if they actually have conviction. Yeah, and look, Republicans, of course, in the Senate are in the minority. So it's not like they have all this immense power, but they do have a, a, a simple power, which is not to roll over. So if somebody comes along and they're like, hey, do I have unanimous consent for this crazy idea? One senator's allowed to say, no, you don't. I don't give you unanimous consent. You want to do this? Pass it through a normal vote. That's what Tuberville Put your did. name on it. Exactly. And, and, uh, and yet he, and he was in for attacks from his own party. So, for instance, Dan Sullivan and Joni Ernst. Let me play some audio from them. The types of vile attacks that they launched against their own colleague who was standing on the side of decency and the law. We're going to look back at this episode and just be stunned. And what a national security suicide mission this became. We have done the best that we can to honor the request of a fellow senator that these nominations be brought to the floor and voted on individually. And I really respect men of their word. I do not respect men who do not honor their word. And by the way, that that too was a lie because Joni Ernst did not bring up an individual vote for a promotion. She brought forward a unanimous consent request for an individual uh, uh, promotion. So it was again, Tommy Tuberville said, no, I'm not granting unanimous consent. That's consistent throughout this. And uh, they she for that reason, she said that he was not a man of honor. I mean, that's how vile this got. Yeah, Joni Ernst is that kind of classic Republican politician who releases an ad every election cycle about how she's, you know, from a good old girl, uh, good old farm days, and she's going to go there and take care of the swamp, and she gets to the swamp, and she treats it like a hot tub, and she does whatever the Pentagon wants, and she attacks her Republican <laughs> colleagues to take a stand. <laughs> she it's so bad. The, it's, it's, she treats the swamp like a hot tub. I'm stealing that. That's great. <laughs> and and Lindsey Graham was uh-huh. out there as well attacking. But you know it, it, the absurdity of the whole thing is the Pentagon was saying national security is under threat. Uh, the we're Senate Republicans there, you decided, were saying national security is under threat. Well, if it is, guess what? Stop, stop paying for abortions. It seems like pretty simple. This isn't Tommy Tuberville coming in and saying, listen, I'm new in town, but I've got this radical political uh, agenda that I want to push on the Pentagon. Right. He was telling the Pentagon, hey, you can't do the radical political agenda. He wasn't trying to insert change. He was trying to undo change in a very recent one. Now, when this policy was first announced, he was his senator-elect. It was in December uh, last year, and he said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you if you try to do this. And then when they actually they enacted it, uh, Lloyd Austin enacted it in February, and he said, fine, I'm going to do exactly what I told you. He wasn't the aberration. So, But, but to reiterate, this, is not just, this wasn't just a mere policy decision. This is something that is illegal. This is in violation of the law, a violation of the Hyde Amendment. They can't do this, and yet they did it anyway. And one Republican senator, with some help from people like J.D. Vance and Mike Lee, but principally Tommy Tuberville on his own, stands up and he's like, hey, you're not allowed to do this. And he gets betrayed by his own party. And, and when they had they, they snatched Vic, uh, defeat from the jaws of victory in the end, and it was it was an heroic stand. Uh, it, the, the whole absurdity is, you know, the, and other senators, Republican senators have asked for some of the information from the Pentagon. They said, all right, if this is so important to national security, why don't you? Provide us some information. How many abortions have actually been paid for? How much, how much of this are you doing? How has it impacted military readiness? And they refuse to give the numbers. Now, I don't think that abortion, out of all the existential issues that our country is facing, the collapse of the family, the collapse of our industrial, yes. uh, the fakeness of our economy, the collapse of the border, deaths of despair, abortion in the military is not the most pressing of all these issues that are going nope. on that we're facing, but it just shows here – that with a little bit of courage, conviction, bravery, and a willingness to go out on your own, these politicians who say, I can't do anything because I'm not in the majority, yes, you can. You can make a difference. And I, you know, I, hope, that some, I hope that people take a, politicians take a lesson from Tuberville on what you can accomplish. And I hope voters take notice of, what, did, are you a Dan Sullivan supporter or a Journey Owns supporter? And you saw what they did? Well, take notice of that because now you know who's, who's really on your team. I will say it's like amazing that they could, with a straight face, telling you that killing a baby is better for military readiness than having it. 
Isn't that amazing? So in other words, like pregnancy is a threat to military readiness. The last thing we want is female troops to be pregnant. That that gets in the way. They they can't go to war if they're pregnant. This is this is the idea. This is what they this is what they're saying. This is the argument they're making. It sounds like the same exact argument that corporate America makes for aborting every baby they can get their hands on. Abort your child for our company. It's and yeah, it's profitable. Yeah, the the, cor the corporations they will go out now and include it in some of the benefit packages that employees get. This is oh amazing. yeah, but by the way, we'll give you an abortion if you want. We'll fly out there if you come work for us in a state that has place some very basic restrictions around yeah. access to killing your kids will help you because that that helps the bottom line yeah helps, maternity uh, you know, leave is expensive we don't want you going away and you might quit your job after you have a baby that's the last thing we want i'll tell you what we've got a better deal it's gonna it's gonna save us a lot of money we'll just kill your kid and it's so shameful that after decades of hard work in a professional military that finally got past those hippies who used to scream baby killers at them as i walked by now they're actually devoted to a policy of killing American babies. It doesn't yeah. seem like the business that the U.S. military ought to be in. At the behest of the people who were screaming baby killers. And so they, <laughs> Exactly. It's like, it's like the craziest. It, it gets dark out there. It gets dark. I know. I know. Well, you bring light, man, every time you cover all these important stories. Chris Bedford, again, executive editor at the Common Sense Society magazine. Uh, really appreciate your insight on this topic and so many others, Chris. And it was nice. Chris also emceed. I should congratulate him on the American Principles Project Christmas Gala last night and did a fantastic job. So, uh, Chris, good work all around. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, Tommy Tuberville. I actually do have some audio for you real quick on Tommy Tub from Tommy Tuberville this week on the hold being over. Here is what he said to the media. Senator Tuberville, yes. do you have any regrets that you didn't achieve exactly what you set out to do, that the policy is still in place? Yeah, I'm, yeah I, it was pretty much a draw. I mean, they didn't get what they wanted. We didn't get what we wanted. And, you know, they just, when, they, when they change the rules, it's hard to, it's hard to win. And so they changed the ND, NDA rules. We didn't get to fight for it to leave it in the Senate. And so just unfortunate the American people didn't get a voice. Do you mind just stating what you said off camera real quick? Just what's going to happen? What just happened? Yeah, just a bit. Just well, time. we're going to, I'm releasing everybody. I still got a hold on, I think, 11 four star generals. Everybody else is completely released from me. Now, somebody else might, I think some, there's a few other people got holes on one or two or three people. But other than that, it's over. All right, thank you. That's Tommy Tuberville. And uh, we get the news today, the Military Times reporting on this defense package that there was some compromise achieved. Uh, the, the, on the abortion issue, uh, it continues to be as ghoulish and awful as it is, thanks to Biden's violation of the law. Uh, but they do say the negotiators included several provisions that restricted diversity, equity, and inclusion training in military operations. They never should have been there in the first place. Apparently, the, the legislation will restrict some of that. Far fewer than what House Republicans had pushed for. One provision will prevent defense leaders from creating any new DEI-focused positions until a review of current jobs related to the issue is completed. Uh, so there's that, I guess, a little... I guess something that Republicans can hang their hats on and say, look, we got something here. Uh, we we stripped just a little bit of racial prejudice out of the American military uh, as placed there by the American left.